Hello, everyone. My name is Chris Fernland, and I'm a program manager at eCampus Ontario. It is my pleasure to introduce two individuals who are going to share their journey building customized micro-credentials at Red River College Polytechnic in Winnipeg. Their talk, titled Micro-Credentialing for Gap Training, will focus on the initial partnership between Red River College and Skip the Dishes and Just Eat Takeaway and the corresponding co-branded digital badges. Introducing Nadine Ogborn, who is the Director of the Center for Learning and Program Excellence at Red River College Polytechnic. She's been in this role since 2018, and Nadine has worked in post-secondary education for most of her career with experience at McMaster University, Mohawk College, and the Manitoba, Manitoba Institute of Trades and Technologies, MITT. Nadine has participated in several cross-institutional micro-credential working groups and committees and has contributed to establishing guiding principles and practices for micro-credential development at RRC. Also with us is Jonathan Bauer, who is a manager at Red River College Polytechnic Corporate Solutions Team, leading business development and project management of customized training projects for local and national organizations across a variety of sectors. Jonathan's background includes working in various management, people, HR, and instructor training roles, spanning post-secondary, nonprofit, startup, and enterprise environments. Please join me in welcoming Nadine and Jonathan in the chat. There will be an opportunity for questions at the end of their talk. If you wish to ask a question, please do so by using the Q&A box. Without further ado, please welcome Nadine and Jonathan. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're very excited to present to you today. And uh, so we're going to be presenting about a specific partnership that RRC Polytech has uh, we skip the dishes, just eat takeaway. So I'm I'm pretty sure everyone is familiar with uh, skip the dishes and just eat takeaway. But uh, to give everyone a bit of an overview, they're um, a pretty big deal in the online food ordering space. Uh, skip was started by two Canadian brothers who, with the assistance of three additional co-founders, grew the company and brand across Canada. Uh, and in a few cities in the US in the, you know, around 2012 to 2016, uh, they kept growing. Uh, Just Eat Takeaway uh, acquired Skip the Dishes uh, in the late uh, 2010s. And, uh, and now we're very excited to talk about how we're partnering with them to grow their workforce uh, and skills within their workforce. So. Very excited to be here today with Jonathan. We'd also like to acknowledge it, our colleague, Bill Rutherford, who contributed to this presentation, but wasn't able to be with us today. So thanks, Bill. Uh, before we go on, uh, Jonathan and I would really like to acknowledge uh, that RRC Polytech uh, campuses in Winnipeg, where we're presenting from, are located on the original lands of the Anishinaabe, the Ininawak, the Anishinawak, Dakota and Dene peoples and on the homeland of the Red River Métis Nation. And we recognize and honor that Treaty 3 territory Shoal Lake 40 First Nation is the source of Winnipeg's clean drinking water and that treaty territories which provide us with access to electricity that we use in our workplace, learning spaces and our home offices are located in Treaty 5 uh, with uh, impacts to Treaty 3 territory territories and we respect the treaties that were made on these territories and we dedicate ourselves to move forward in partnership with Indigenous communities in the spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. So to give you a sense of what we'll be talking about today, uh, we're going to talk a, a little bit about the partnership between RRC Polytech and uh, Skip the Dishes Just Eat Takeaway. So um, how it started, uh, what the needs were on the skip side, and and how we were able to take what what we do at RC Polytech to uh, to come up with a solution. We're going to talk about what that programming looked like. Talk a little bit about micro credentials at RRC Polytech and how we structure them. And we want to leave lots of time for questions uh, and discussions. We want to hear from all of you. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Jonathan, who has been really instrumental and has deep experience uh, with the SKIP partnership and, uh, and with, with corporate solutions uh, and meeting the needs of, of our clients generally. So over to you, Jonathan. Thanks, Nadine. 
Great to be here. So we want to share a bit about how it all started with Skip. This is back in 2019 when actually they reached out to my colleague Bill. And at that time, Skip was continuing to grow across Canada. So they, their core audiences are restaurants, customers, and couriers um, who kind of support their delivery network. And so they were they were scaling. And with that, they were growing their delivery logistics teams and their care teams to an internal department of over 2,000 people. Uh, this team then also started helping um, other countries, part of the Just Eat Takeaway.com uh, group of companies across the world with their de delivery logistics and care expertise. So we have a, a startup that is growing into an enterprise organization, has seen rapid growth, um, and a lot of in-house knowledge in terms of how systems work, processes work, technology works. So with that uh, came the formation of a training team. And so when Skip knocked on our door, they had a, approximately an internal team of eight staff that were uh, training uh, Skip's ever-increasing workforce. And these were, these were folks primarily based in the Winnipeg headquarter um, for Skip the Dishes. And so with sometimes with training teams, these were people who had progressed from front line. So they'd been hired, they'd shown expertise in their roles, and now they were in the um, position of training and developing and passing on expertise to new staff. Uh, so they had reached out to us really about supporting these in-house experts with developing their facilitation techniques and their adult education training um, expertise as they wanted to advance uh, kind of a training team from a startup environment into a more, um, I guess, elevated, uh, robust, well thought through training experience for both staff and the training team. So what, uh, what the organization wanted was also those, those training owners to have confidence and pride and, well, so let's just talk about confidence. Confidence in the role of, um, you know, the staff, the new staff and the existing staff they were supporting in terms of um, upskilling. We talked a bit about the um, facilitation competency and what they wanted in terms of a sense of pride was that tangible recognition of a credential. So something that really solidified for these individuals that they had accomplished a learning experience that they themselves had, had upgraded their skills and were now able to contribute in an even more, um, more enhanced way to the team. So the solution that we brought forward was to develop a competency uh, based program. So working with RRC Polytech and our focus on applied learning, we, we were quite a great fit. We wanted to focus on um, performing the skill as opposed to just learning about concepts. So if we think about creating learning content, if we think about facilitation for adults, if we think about assessing the learning, measuring that transfer of learning, these were tangible things that uh, we could support and ensure that their staff um, gained. We wanted to provide, working with the with SKIP, a recognition of certification. And in this case, it came as a SKIP RRC Polytech co-branded co digital badge. And then we also wanted to provide that pathway for further learning because you know this, this was really step one for many of the folks participating. We're talking a lot about micro-credentials and digital badges. And so with that, uh, over to you, Nadine, to comment on what is a micro-credential from RRC Polytech's perspective. I know a, a, probably a lot of people that are that are in the audience today have been uh, navigating this over the past few years as micro-credentials have uh, kind of, you know, really come to the forefront and people are talking about them and what what we found uh, certainly in the beginning and was that um, people wanted them, but we didn't necessarily know exactly what they were. So we developed uh, a definition of micro-credentials at RRC Polytech that is not unlike the definition that you will see uh, for other organizations uh, and draws heavily on for example, the definition used by colleges and institutes Canada, Polytechnics Canada, 
but our definition of a micro-credential is a certification of assessed learning that is additional, alternate, complementary to, or a formal component of a formal qualification. So the big piece of that that we, um, that we really hang our hat on is the assessed learning piece. When, uh, when a micro-credential is, is awarded from RRC Polytech, it does uh, indicate there, that there has been a, an assessment of the skills that, um, that are acquired within that micro-credential. Um, and what that does is that differentiates it from some other different kinds of shorter learning that we've been used to. So for example, workshops or, or other types of learning where participants might attend, um, and take away and, and be able to apply that. In the case of the micro-credential and what, uh, what Skip the Dishes wanted is really to be able to, for those participants to demonstrate the skills that they uh, had acquired and be assessed on that. So that, uh, that, that has been really helpful in, uh, for us generally to be able to have that conversation about what type of learning belongs or, or is represented by a micro-credential and what are some other learning offerings that are still valuable, but not a micro-credential. Thanks, Nadine. And so when we're moving forward with our clients, and in this case, skip the dishes, uh, we want to we want to design a program. How did we start? So we collaborated with both skip, also internally our teacher education team, and one of the the benefits as as corporate solutions when we're bringing or brainstorming and or these solutions with clients is we we can work internally with our very talented um, academic areas and and there's a lot of internal collaboration and synergy that actually then just brings a, a great product forward because we're working right with the experts in that area. Um, so a kind of a sample needs assessment of what went on. Uh, meeting, understanding the training owners, um, job descriptions, interviews with leaders, interviews with stakeholders, interviews with the training owners themselves. What what did they want to see in terms of better? Um, and then observation. So some of our very experienced adult educators went down and observed classroom sessions that the um, the training owners were conducting. As we discussed, we want to focus on performing the skills as opposed to uh, just learning about this the skill. So when we're we were designing the program, we were looking for alignment with the existing skills that training owners brought to the team, uh, the roles and responsibilities that they had. So that kind of work in action, and then <clears throat> RRC Polytech bringing their expertise in adult education, teacher education, and focus on applied learning, and that uh, that assessment piece to ensure that the learning was was applied and measured. So what did that look like when we're, we're talking about competencies and really um, and, and Nadine will discuss next both this micro credential as well as a, another a subsequent one we worked on. But if you look at <clears throat> some of these topics, so the micro credential was divided into three modular areas, and we had different um, competencies and topics within them that drove the applied learning. So preparing for for teaching, understanding learning outcomes, designing the activities, then how do we present? demonstrating um, ourselves in a professional manner as a facilitator, engaging learners, and then assessing, and then that ongoing reflection that we all know is so critical. And Nadine, over to you. What you see on the screen now is the visual representation of the SKIP training professional badge, and that's the, the piece that we're talking about at, today, and then also a badge called Virtual Leadership, which is another offering that, uh, based on the, our initial partnership with SKIP, they continued to partner with us for, for uh, needs within their workforce, and the, and the Virtual Leadership badge was also included in that. So to talk a little bit about uh, digital badges. So we have a definition for that as well. Actually, Jonathan, if we can go to the back to the uh, the badge slide, that would be great. 
Um, so the digital badge is a visual, visual image that communicates the verified achievement of learning skills um, and often represents the completion of a micro credential. Uh, digital badges are embedded with metadata, which contain information about the credential uh, and provide supporting evidence about how it was assessed and earned. So we see this as really the um, one of the big advantages of being able to deliver uh, learning in this way. Uh, and Jonathan mentioned uh, what Skip wanted for their training. Uh, professionals and they really wanted that recognition and knowledge of the skills that they've gained. And this is a this is a general and and broad benefit of um, of being able to recognize micro credentials with a digital badge. So when we think about how we might recognize a course, um, it shows up as a line on a transcript. You might see um, the title of the course. Uh, the grade someone got, uh, but you don't get any more granular detail about what were the learning outcomes, what were the assessments, um, and get a sense of what that learner has actually demonstrated. And I know in in conversations, the um, I would say that's still something we're finding out about exactly who values that information. Do will employers actually click into the badge? and really look at all of that information and, the, and that sort of thing. So they very well might, and, the, and all of that information is there. Um, if they would like to look at it, learners can display virtual badges as a link on their resume, on their LinkedIn profile. But beyond that, uh, what they're also able to do is the learner has access to all of this information. Um, and the language that they can use on their resume or in an interview setting to describe what kind of skills they've uh, they've acquired and that they can do. And that can be a really great benefit uh, for them as well. Sometimes it's hard to talk about uh, the things that we know and can do. So this, uh, this more uh, detailed information that's available uh, within a digital badge allows learners to be able to do this and to sell themselves within their own organizations uh, or if they're job seeking outside of their organizations as well. So if we go to the next slide, I'm going to talk a little bit about, again, more broadly and generally, the guiding principles uh, that we use at RRC Polytech to kind of further, further get into that conversation about whether something is a micro-credential or isn't. So uh, micro-credentials at RRC Polytech are governed uh, by academic policy. So we align with all of our academic policy and they're uh, in line with the other credentials that we provide within our credential qualification framework. Uh, they represent and verify mastery of a skill or competence. Um, they're developed in response to the needs of stakeholders. So this is a, this, we really, uh, we were really able to get at this guiding principle with the SKIP partnership and, and this, this uh, is a really great example of connecting with employers, industry, or the community to meet, to meet a need and be able to recognize that. Uh, Micro-credentials are unique offerings and do not replicate a college course. So while we might use um, uh, content or build on content that we already have, what we don't want to do is sort of uh, sort of flood the market with, you know, a million different badges. If students are completing a certificate program, that's their credential. A micro-credential would be something separate. Um, and we wouldn't see students get, you know, a big credential like a certificate or a diploma, and then a bunch of different micro-credentials on top of that, uh, which they're already recognized for within their uh, other credential. They are portable and stackable records of learning. So that portability was what I spoke about before. So being able to uh, show that on your LinkedIn profile, link to it uh, in uh, within a resume. Uh, and, and we're always looking for opportunities to stack and build on the micro-credentials that we have. And it's represented by a digital badge, which you saw in the previous slide. Thanks, Nadine.
So we want to comment on the pathway in this case for training owners. <clears throat> and so in this case, they were able to achieve credit recognition for the micro-credential training and ladder it into the Teaching for Learning certificate offered by RRC Polytech, which then further ladders into a Bachelor of Arts in Adult Education in a partnership with Fraser Valley University. So in addition, there's always RPL or recognition of prior learning at RRC Polytech that can recognize previous certificates, diplomas, and degrees that could provide advancement at individual paces. And what Nadine was showing on the previous slide in terms of virtual leadership, that really came about as part of an in-house leadership progression journey. So it was one of three steps as they, uh, through the pandemic, uh, pivoted to a hybrid workplace. Um, and they wanted to really invest in people's leadership journey. So whether it's a, a pathway towards further academic studies or a pathway towards uh, further career enhancement, that was a uh, kind of a valuable um, a valuable uh, quality of being able to work with the micro credentials and have that recognition of applied learning. So with that, we uh, want to thank you for for hearing us and and um, attending today, and we'll go for Q and A. Hey, thank you, Jonathan and Dean. There are a couple questions, two questions in the Q&A. I want to encourage everyone, <clears throat> excuse me, attending to ask your questions using the Q&A box. I will jump to the first question from anonymous attendee. Do you consider the micro-credentials for credit or non-credit? I think that might have been answered already. So uh, this particular micro-credential, like Jonathan said, is uh, for credit and can be applied uh, to, to credit in, in our RC programs. Uh, but that the answer broadly is both. We're able to, do, we have both uh, credit-based and, and non-credit micro-credentials. And I know the, the provincial structure for that is a little bit different across the country. Uh, Manitoba does not have a pro uh, provincial uh, credential framework. Each institution has their own. So that does give us some flexibility on uh, what the credential looks like and whether we're able to offer it for credit or non-credit. Thank you, Nadine. Uh, another question, which credential authority provide the digital badge for the micro-credential, e.g., for example, MyCreds, BC Diploma, or Credly? Uh, we're using CanCred. CanCred. Cool. From an unknown guest, uh, I'd be interested to learn more about how the micro-credentials led to eligibility for a degree. Question. Okay, I can speak to that. So basically what would happen is that uh, the program that the Teaching for Learning and Applied uh, Education Certificate that the, uh, that the learner would get credit in for concrete completing the micro-credential, we have transfer credit available from that program to a bachelor's program at uh, Fraser Valley University, and that, uh, that pathway existed prior to the micro-credential. So it would be just that, uh, that the, the micro-credential ladders into a certificate program, which gains them credit into that bachelor's program, which uh, which leads into a master's program at uh, at Fraser Valley. So we were able to uh, to connect it to an existing pathway that uh, that was already in place prior to the micro credential. Very cool. From Robert Luke, uh, I'd like to hear more about the stacking of micro credentials you noted. What are some of the ways you have done this? What, what has the uptake been? I can comment on a on a customized training project. So we've seen we're working with one partner, a national nonprofit as part of their uh, professional development program. We've been able to have both a level one and a level two. So it kind of spans a learning journey for 18 months and folks kind of build into a level one badge and they build competencies and they demonstrate learning and then they have the option to choose to advance into a um, an additional micro credential, and and Nadine, maybe if you want to comment on that from a, an additional academic perspective. 
Absolutely. So um, I think yeah, we're always looking for opportunities to uh, to be able to build on on the skills that uh, that learners that learners have. So um, so this can I think the we're in a position where the the world is our oyster in this way, um, and it really depends on what those needs are of learners and what uh, you know future partnerships with uh, with employers and what they're looking for, what they're looking to build. And I think what we're what we're also looking to do is uh, it generally is that, and I'm sure these words have been thrown around a lot at uh, at the forum, but that upskilling and reskilling piece. So, for example learners that obtained a credential a, a little while ago. I'll use a, the example of, say, auto mechanics. And we know that that industry is changing. We're seeing more things like electric vehicles, that sort of thing. So where, uh, where something stackable might come in is someone already has their red seal or their uh, diploma in auto mechanics, but they're coming back for a micro-credential that builds on that knowledge but applies it to electric vehicles or uses a different technology or technique uh, that is more current. So this is this is where we're seeing a lot of opportunity for stacking, where where fields and sectors are changing, and people are coming back to build on their uh, the knowledge and expertise that they have, but gain but gain skill in those uh, those those emerging uh, technologies and techniques in their sector. Thank you, Nadine. I'm going to pull a relevant question. I'm going out of order here, but um, does this model allow for anyone who left university after two years to pick up again and start over? Uh, or could like any newcomer use this as a way to reskill uh, as needed? I would say absolutely. Um, what we're looking for with our micro-credentials um, and, and, and to be honest, our programs in general is to have as few barriers to entry as possible. So when it comes to micro credentials and, and Jonathan, I think would know this too, there are actually very few admission requirements and we try to keep them as, as open as possible so that as many learners can, can benefit from them as possible. So in your context, I guess, who needs to know about these guiding principles? Like who do you share it with? Industry, participants, leaders? Do you keep it internal? And I guess, how do you communicate them to interested parties? And yeah, is there value in sharing to others? So I think there's there's mm -hmm. great value in sharing them to others. Um, and so we do we do try to share them as much as possible internally, but um, but also, uh, and I, I wouldn't say we necessarily speak to them in the same sort of specific way as we had them like right there on a slide. Um, but uh, one example of this is we have them available and linkable for and anyone internally who is looking at developing a micro-credential or we use them as we develop a micro-credential. We have a version of these with specific, uh, I would say, plain language speaking points. Um, and as Jonathan knows, uh, Jonathan, Bill, their colleague Jill, our president, Fred Meyer, uh, have had so many opportunities to talk about micro-credentials and have done a wonderful job in weaving the language from the guiding principles into their speaking points, I think, in a really um, in a really palatable way that we're not trying to sort of hammer guiding principles at people, but just sort of get that those talking points and that language in people's heads to be able to have the conversations um, when we get down to looking at how micro credentials could meet a need for them. Jonathan, I'm sure you can absolutely expand on that. Well, just and only to add that when we work with industry or we work with associations, um, government, First Nations. Um, you know, these guiding principles, our stakeholders, our clients do want to understand them. So we, to Nadine's point, we do share them. Um, uh, we, we just make it as relevant as possible to the discussion. Thank you both. Well, this is a wrap. So I want to thank you once again, Jonathan and Nadine for joining us today and joining the micro credential forum. Thank you. This has been great, super informative and yeah, let's chat again soon. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Take care.